be instruments of good work. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think about an instrument? An instrument, most of the time, when some, the first thing that comes to mind is something musical, like a guitar or a piano, keyboard, or drums, something like that. That's what comes to mind most of the time when we think about the word instrument. But you know what? There's many things that are instruments. You know, when you go to the dentist and the tools that he uses to work in your mouth are instruments to him. You know, the people who sing, um, their voices are instruments to them. Um, so there are many types of instruments that are associated with, or there's many things that are associated with the word instruments, okay? So it's not just something musical like this guitar, although um, this is something that is, a mu this is a musical instrument. So I wish I could play it better than I do. One day that's coming. But this keyboard is, is a musical instrument. So today we're going to be talking about instruments of good work. How many of you know these instruments, just like these musical instruments here, can be used to glorify and uplift the name of Jesus? They can. But also, as you'll see in the message today, there's instruments in this world that are used to entertain people, basically. And that's all that you get out of it. So today, every day we are faced with opportunities to be used by God. Whether it's on the job, in our families, or just at the grocery store. God desires us to be an instrument of good. So if you look the person beside you and say, you are an instrument. Regardless if you want to be or not, you are an instrument. So we, not only do we have musical instruments in this place today, we have human instruments in this place today. So today, be reminded you are an instrument to do good. And I'm not just talking about Sunday morning only, because most of us think that the only time that we're any good is on uh, either in church on Sunday or, or Wednesday or whatever, but we're good. We can be good instruments in the world, and that's where we really shine, is that when we're instruments in the world, amen, hallelujah. If we want to be used by God, we have to be guided and directed by the Holy Spirit to accomplish the task God wants us to do. When God chooses his noble instruments, there's a standard which he uses. Today I hope to convey you the standards and principles God uses to pick noble instruments for good work. God's desire is for all of us to be noble instruments for a specific task. Amen. Could you stand with me this morning? We're going to take a moment to read some scripture. And the scripture, if you've seen your note sheet, is 2 Timothy 2. And we're, going to, we're actually going to use a lot of scripture from 2 Timothy, but this part I want us to read right now, 2, 20 through 26. And it says, In a large house there are articles not only of gold and silver, but of also of wood and, and clay. Some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. If a man cleanses himself of the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to go through 26. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the name of the, of the Lord out of a pure heart. Do not, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him, he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant him repentance, leading them to the knowledge of the truth. And that they will, con they will come to their senses and escape the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Father, we just thank you for today. Thank you for just your blessings in this service today. Thank you for the anointing, Lord, to minister your word. Thank you for anointing for our ears to, to hear and receive from you today. We bless you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. So the first thing I want us to, to realize today, number one, God has something for you to do. God has something for you to do. 
and and every person in this facility this morning, whether you're in this building or watching on the internet or whatever, God has something for you to do. No matter who you are, God wants to work through you. Amen? Just as each one of these items that I've talked about this morning, they have a specific role or a part to play, so do you. Amen? This keyboard is not the same as that guitar. You know, this guitar has a different role than this in this keyboard, this piano here. Amen? So it has strings on it. A piano has strings, but you play it differently. So each one, even though they are their role is to produce in music, they're each played differently, and they produce different sounds. It's just like that with, with you today. Each one of us in this place are different. We're not just like each other. Aren't you glad today? You're not just like me. <laughs> but we all are unique. And I know that has been said, and you know that because your DNA is not going to match somebody else's DNA. You are, you're made and designed. And what is it? Fearfully and wonderfully made is what God says about us. Amen? So we are unique. Although, the, just like these instruments are unique in the way that they're played, our personalities are unique. Everything about us is unique. But that doesn't mean that we cannot work together to produce something good. Linda Parker gave a devotion on a prayer, ser prayer service that we had here one day. And she talked about how, uh, and I'm not sure the exact wordings. I was going to actually call her, but I forgot. <laughs> but she talked about when a symphony gets together. If you look at a symphony play, there's a whole lot of commotion that's going on. You know, some people are playing like this. Some are maybe strumming a guitar. Some are playing the or then they've got the wind instruments that are doing this. But if you look at that, that's a lot of chaos. But their music, when it blends together, it creates harmony, and it's beautiful. Amen? So we have to bring, be instruments of good purpose that bring harmony to Jesus. Amen? And I, that's not in my notes, but the Lord has taken me there. So anyway, so we're going to go there in Jesus' name. So we each have abilities to do something and to offer others. Amen? Um, like I said, if you look at the world, you see people who have abilities and have influence, and they influence people. You know, politicians influence people. They, they you know, movie actors and, and stuff like that, they influence people. Is their influence always good? No, most of the time it's not. That's sad to say, but most of the time it's not. Imagine if all those people who had all those talents and abilities would use them for the kingdom of God. Goodness gracious, what could we accomplish today? But you know what? It doesn't matter that they don't use their abilities for the kingdom of God. Because you know, we're stronger than they are anyway. Because who do we have on our side? We have Jesus on our side. And because of him, we are able to do anything. Amen? So not just are we just simple instruments that are just, just nobody. You know, because sometimes actors, you think, well, I'm just a nobody and there's somebody. No, we're somebody in Jesus. And we can accomplish much because we have Jesus on our side. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm getting excited about this this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, God desires that we are used for the noblest causes. And the word noble... I want to read that definition. So go back. The God desires that we are used for the noblest causes. The word noble means having honorable qualities, having moral eminence, and freedom from anything petty, mean, dub or dubious in conduct and character. Amen. Let me read it again. Noble means having honorable qualities, having moral eminence, and freedom from anything petty, mean, or dubious in conduct and character. Does it matter what you do as long as you're doing it with honorable qualities? It, no, it doesn't. Because you know what? Jesus wants us to be used to do honorable things. Even if you have a small task, as long as you are doing it with noble qualities, you are just as important as ones, those ones who have a much larger, noticeable task. You know that today? No matter if you, we like to, we like to pick on the, the, um, 
the people who clean something. You know, we like to put them and say they're at the bottom of, of the social status. But you know what? They're just as important as a person who ministers and preaches the gospel because they're making it presentable so that the gospel can be received. Amen? You know, I was, I was listening to a sermon yesterday as I was preparing for this message. And, and Pastor Jim Simbla, I love the Brooklyn Tabernacle. I love Jim Simbla. He's an awesome man of God. And he was talking about an act, uh, something that happened at somewhere they were. And him and another pastor and the people were complaining about the toilets being stopped up. You know, because something was stopped up inside. And, and you know what? They didn't go get the maintenance team to go down and clean it up and make it work. They did it themselves. Now, we got to be that way. We can't get to the point in our lives where we think, oh, well, I'm much more better than that, that I can't do that job. No. you got to be able to take your coat off and do the things that you don't necessarily want to do. Does that be, is that being noble? Yes, it is, because you're doing something to glorify the king. You may not see it right then and there, but you are doing something to glorify Jesus. Amen. But the main thing I want us to see right here is that no matter what we do, as long as we do everything as unto the Lord, our task will be noble to Him. Amen? Maybe you, um, maybe you don't know what you should be doing. Well, I'll tell you this this morning. Just do something. Just do something. You know, Nike had a thing one time a saying, just do it. We got to, we got to be go-getters and we just got to do it. Amen? We cannot wait for somebody else to do what God's called us to do. And I know I harp on this a lot, but I'm, I'm sorry that I think that's where we are as a church and realizing that we have gifts and abilities to give into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. No matter who you are, you've got something to offer. It doesn't matter what you've been through, what your social status is. Who cares about that anyway? I mean, that's what the world puts on us. That's not what God puts on us. But we have something to offer to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. If you put forth the effort to accomplish something for God, he will show you what to do and empower you to do it. So many times we just feed ourselves because we look at other people and what they are doing and say, I, don't, I want to do that. Or their job is more important than what I, can, what I could do. So we sit right there and let the flesh talk us in, out of doing something to further the kingdom of God. How many times do we look at other people and say, look what they're doing. They're accomplishing something great for God. Well, did God anoint you to do that? That's what we got to ask ourselves. Did God anoint us to do what they're doing? And if he did, then why aren't you doing it? You have no reason to sit there and complain because if he's anointed you to do something for his kingdom, he will give you everything you need to accomplish it for his kingdom. We sit on our duff sometimes so much and we look at people and we complain and we criticize because they're doing this or that when all along we should be doing it and we're just mad because we're not doing it. Amen? Hallelujah. Get it together this morning today. You know what? We are a team. We cannot be little big eyes and little U's and all this other stuff. We are a team. And if we are a team, we will go get what God has called us to go get. So the harvest will come in. What does he say? To pray for the Lord of the harvest to send in the workers? So we are workers this morning to go into the harvest. We've got something we can do. Amen? So don't tell me that you don't have anything to do because I'll find you something to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we so many times let the flesh talk us right out of something. The devil and the flesh, they work hand in hand together sometimes. We, I know, the, the, you know, the devil really gets more glory than he deserves. You know what, this morning, most of the time it's just the flesh. You know, pinch yourself. You are flesh this morning. You, you'll feel it if you pin, get pinched hard enough. We are flesh this morning. And some, how many know our flesh sometimes is in pain and we don't want to do nothing. We're sleepy. We're tired. Sometimes I feel like we are sleeping all the time. But we, God has called us with a noble purpose to do something for his kingdom. Amen. I'll get it across some way or another this morning. Hallelujah. We are our own enemies sometimes. We are our own enemy sometimes and most of the time, I would say. I was being a little bit um, considerate there. <laughs> but we are our own enemy sometimes. 
if you do not know what to do, I'll tell you some of the things you can do in the last point of this message. So if you're sitting here wondering, I don't know what to do, I am clueless. And hey, I've been there. Sometimes I feel like I'm clueless and still don't know what I'm doing. But you know what? Then the Lord pricks my heart and says, listen, my son, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You know, no matter what we go through, no matter where we go in life, the call that God has placed on our lives will never go extinct until we die. You know, that doesn't mean that you'll always be doing what you're doing. Sometimes ministries change. Patty and I were youth pastors for seven years. And we didn't, well, we knew that we weren't supposed to be there um, forever. But God changed that and he opened the door for Jonathan and Erica to take that place. And I believe that God's got great things in store for them. But, but anyway, what my point in being is, just because you're doing this today doesn't mean that you'll be doing it for the rest of your life. Amen? So if you don't like it, just hang in there because one day there'll become a change. <laughs> you know, there possibly will come a change or God will change your heart so that you will enjoy what you're doing. Amen? So um, let's read 2 Timothy 1 and 6. Let's go there in our scripture this morning. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you by the laying on of my hands. For God did not give you a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. That was the second part. I didn't put that in my notes. But 1 and 6, what does it say there? Fan the flame on the inside of you. I want to read this commentary about this from the Life Application Study Bible. At the time of his ordination, Timothy had received special gifts of the Spirit to enable him to serve the church. In telling Timothy to fan into flame the gift of God, Paul was encouraging him to persevere. Timothy did not need new revelations or new gifts. He needed the courage and self-discipline to hang on to the truth to use the gifts he had already received. If Timothy would step out boldly in faith and proclaim the gospel once again, the Holy Spirit would go with him and give him power. When you use the gifts God has given you, you will find that God will give you the power you need to accomplish whatever the task he gives you. Amen? See, most of the time we're looking for something new when God is telling us you hadn't even done what I gave you to do to start with. We don't need a new revelation. We just need to grasp hold of faith today and look inside of our hearts and just look at and see what God has given us to do. You know, people are always looking for a new word, a new word. God, I need a new word. Well, you got to look in deep inside sometimes because God's not always going to give us a new word. It's all right here. He's not writing another Bible today that I know about. It's all right here. So sometimes we have to, I have preached this many times before because Patty reminded me of this, stir up the gift, stir up the gift, stir up the gift. See, we sit here and we complain about things, that things are not getting done, there's not enough help, but how many times do we say, God, stir up the gift inside of us so that we can accomplish what he's desired for us to accomplish and stop looking at what everybody else is doing and concentrate on what you're supposed to be doing today. Amen? If you're doing what God's called you to do, then this doesn't apply to you. What I'm here today to tell you to do is stay encouraged because times are going to get hard. As you read that in chapter, in chapter 4 of this scripture, you're going to realize that times are going to get hard. Situations are not going to get any better. They're just going to get worse. But why do we have the assurance that Jesus is on our side, that nothing shall come against us. He said that the weapons of the devil can't destroy us unless we let him destroy us. But if I'm, I'm on board today that the devil's not going to destroy me, he might come at me and attack me, and he will. You better believe if you are doing something for God, you're going to be attacked. And if you're walking around in this place, and I hate to be so blunt to say it this morning, but I'm going to tell you the truth. If you're not doing anything from God, then Satan's not going to attack you. If you're sitting so happy that, oh, I'm not doing anything, and... I'm not being attacked. I'm so happy. Well, let me tell you something. You're not in the will of God. But whenever Satan's on you, like right, white on rice, I've heard people say, then you must be doing something good for the kingdom. See, so many times the devil would use that to discourage us, to want to give up 
because he's attacking us. But if he wasn't attacking us, then we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. I mean, God wouldn't be using us. I don't know how to phrase that right, but let me see. But anyway, we've got to be busy doing something for God. Amen. So I'm telling you today, if you step out, God will supply all you need to accomplish the task he's given you to do. But what do you got to do? You've got to step out of the boat. You know, so many times we look at Peter when he stepped out of the boat. How many of you would have stepped out if he was in his place? He actually had to take the time that he was going to step out on the water even though he did sink. Many of us wouldn't even get out of the boat because we don't like the water. <laughs> but seriously... You know, today, if we're going to do something, we've got to step beyond where we are right this moment. If we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got. Amen? Gary Dale has said that multiple times over, and I've just took that phrase and held on to it. If we've always done what we've, if we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we always got. And what have we got? Nothing. Nothing. You know what the definition of insanity is? Doing things over and over again the same way and expecting different results. Are we insane people? I think God has given us the ability to be smart this morning. To, to do something wise with our lives. Amen. So number two this morning. Oh my. Whew, I got 15 minutes. If we're going to be used, number two, if we're going to be used by God, we must not participate in foolish conversation. If we are going to be used by God, we must not participate in foolish, foolish conversation. What is foolish conversation? Well, what I see here in Scripture is that we have to stay away from arguments, things that exalt, exalt itself against God and all that He is, negativity, and the list can go on and on and on and so on. Amen? So what is the benefit for, for the believer or anyone else to engage in such trash. Is there any benefit at all? Is there any benefit whatsoever that we engage in stuff, such stuff? We have to keep ourselves clean if we want to be engaged as a noble, use, useful instrument for God. Amen? God does not want his children involved with things that would hurt our testimony as a Christian. Amen. He doesn't um, doesn't that doesn't mean we won't make mistakes. Yes, we're going to make mistakes, but thank the Lord, the blood cleanses us from our mistakes. Amen. But how much better would it be if we never if we never got involved in those things anyway? You know, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt our testimony, and we'll be more useful for the kingdom of God. But God does provide a way for us to, even if we mess up and make mistakes, we can ask forgiveness. He does restore. He does re-strengthen us to be able to accomplish his purpose in his kingdom. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. Do you like to be around strife all the time? I don't. If I can avoid it, I will. But it seems like lately it just creeps in in every corner. Strife is everywhere. People are upset because of this in the economy. They're upset because of this politician said this. I mean, my goodness, people, let's come on off of it now. And I mean, that's just the way the world is going to be. We can sit there and complain about it and complain about it. And we sit there and complain and don't do anything. I mean, yes, but... Well, I can't run for president. Yes, you can. Are you a citizen of the United States? Yes, you can run for the president's office. Now, I'm not saying that God has called any of us to run for president this morning. But seriously, if complaining is not going to get anything accomplished. What changes things is prayer. Prayer is what changes things in this country. I mean, they can march and they can do all these other kind of creative things. But I'm telling you, if this nation will get back to prayer and depending on God and putting him where he ought to be, then things would turn around and this, all of us would be coming out of this mess. You know? Amen. We have a power as a Christian to stand up and say that I am the servant of the Most High God and he is the one who sent me. Be like Moses. He said, who do I tell Pharaoh that sent me? I am that I am sent you. Amen. We got a call on our lives and we have the Most High on our side. So what can we not accomplish with him? Amen. Oh, that's good today. Whether you like it or not, it's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. It, hallelujah. I don't even know where I'm at. <laughs> Jesus. God is not pleased with all of that stuff. He's not pleased with, you know, the, the arguments and the, and the strife. And, and, I mean, he even plainly tells it in the word there. We're going to go there in a minute. We see it in the workplace. We see it on TV. But he calls us to be above these things and not to take part of them. We're not supposed to take part in that stuff. Now, people want to argue with you sometimes, but you know what you can do? You just not argue back. That is, I mean, some, that might make them more mad, but hey, just walk away. Amen. Don't get involved with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Let's go there. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 19. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. So it is appointed by God that we turn away from wickedness. When we are involved in complaining, arguing, and mistreating others, we are no longer an instrument of God. At that time, we become instruments of the devil. It's the truth this morning. We become instruments of the devil whenever we can't do nothing but argue, complain, and fuss and fight about all this stuff. We are nothing but instruments of the devil. If when can we can if we are we let me rephrase that. What did that? Oh, I'm, I see there. I missed my place. You may think I'm I'm saved. How can I be used by the devil? We can be used by Satan if we're not, not walking in the truth of God. Amen? Why do you think he warns us to stay away from what Paul calls godless chatter? Why does he warn us to stay away from that? The reason is because it only gives a way for us to become more ungodly. So if we're involved in that, we're not being godly at that point. We're being used by the devil, and we're, coming, we're becoming less and less like God. Amen? In verse 14, it says that it ruins those who listen to it. Isn't that the truth? It ruins those who listen to it. We don't want to be instruments of ruin, but instruments of good. So if we want God to use us and give us greater abilities to help people, we're going to have to lay down the things of the flesh... Amen. We can't be complainers. We can't be argumentative. And we can't be involved in silly conversation. We have to heed the verses 22 through 26. And this is what leads me to my next point right here. Verse 22. Flee from evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him, he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to the knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Right there, that proves my point. We can be used by Satan to accomplish things. So number three this morning is what am I supposed to be doing? Point number three, what am I supposed to be doing? We are to be instruments of righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Amen. We are supposed to be instruments of righteousness, faith, love, and peace. We have the authority to take control of the atmosphere around us. And Thursday night, whenever God was giving me this message, he, he dropped the thought in my head to be instruments of good. And I went, I was, I was getting, we were getting ready for bed, and I just turned on the TV, I turned on TBN, just because sometimes I like to browse through and just see what's going on. And would you know that that man was sitting there talking about just this thing, instruments of peace. And I was like, thank you, Lord. I had already talked about this on Thursday with Pastor, what I might be sharing today. And here this was, how that God just orchestrated this. But we, 
instead of getting involved with everything what everyone else is doing in the world, we should be wanting them to get involved with what we are doing. <laughs> you know why? Because there's life in what we do. There's nothing but death in what they do. Now, I know there's good things in the world that people do. I mean, there's all kinds of, of really good, let's see, charities that give and, and help people and all that stuff, and that's great. But you know what? We as the church have more ability to go out and do those things if we would just be used by God. Amen? So we, we should be, people should be wanting to get involved in what we're doing. God has given us the ability to speak peace into situations that are full of disarray and confusion. Amen? God has given us the ability to speak peace into situations that are full of disarray and confusion. So many times we have, to be, we have become accustomed to just going with the flow. You know, we have come accustomed to that, going with the flow. We forget that we're really supposed to go against the flow. Because where is the flow of the world leading today? It's sure not leading to a good place. But if we go against the flow, I'm, and you know what happens when you go against the flow on something? It's going to create heat. What is friction? When you rub two pieces, or you, when you rub sandpaper against something, it creates heat. And it's, but you know what? That friction smooths out whatever you're sanding down. Sometimes we know you need to go against the flow because it, it needs to smooth us down. And let us see where our help comes from. Because we want to be almighty and, oh, 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 yes, I got it together. And all the time God is trying to tell you that you don't have anything together. It's because that I'm alive that you have anything. Amen? So sometimes we need to be smoothed out. If we're a hothead, sometimes we need to go against the world because it will take us right where we need to be. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have, we have excuses like, I don't want to upset the apple cart or let sleeping dogs lie. I know this might be humorous, but God wants, peop wants people to be led to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but we would rather let sleeping dogs lie. Yeah. How many of you know agree with that this morning? We want to let things all be all, all nice and neat. And when God is saying all the time, I want these people saved. I want them in my kingdom. I want them to go to heaven to be with me. And I have given you, the in I'm, you are an instrument of my work so that this can be accomplished. And we walk right on by and say, let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> I'm guilty, amen. I'm guilty of it. Hallelujah. We need to grab hold of faith again that moves mountains. We need to grab hold of the faith that moves mountains. Amen. Get it in your spirit. We have faith that moves mountains. He said, what did you say? He said, if you have a faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou cast in the sea, and it will have to obey you. Amen. Just get it in our spirit this morning. Crank it up this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we operating on all eight cylinders, or are we hitting on two this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. How many times do we hold on to the word so tightly that we squeeze the devil right, right to death? I mean, seriously. How many times did we actually just hold on to this word till the devil's life is just kicked right out? I mean, to tell you, we got it this morning. We got it in his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our faith can't be dead but alive and powerful. We have to be powerful in our faith. We have to love people no matter what. That's a sore subject right there. We have to love people no matter what. Let us set aside our differences and realize that we are all ch children of the king. Does it mean that we're always going to agree on everything? No, we're not always going to agree. But we can still love people with the love of God. Amen? The best way for healing to take place is loving people. I really believe that. If we love people, then healing can take place where there was hurt and strife and, and discouragement and all those things that the enemy wants to bring in. You know, we can be the lighthouse and we can be the one who sets the, the enemy's plans and, and destroys them. Amen? Just by being people of love. You know, Pastor had a you know, great teaching on Wednesday night and he's talking about living under an open heaven. And that message he talked about that we have the keys of heaven and binding and loosen. Okay? I know that most of us were here and heard that. But I want us to refer back to something he said. So go to Matthew chapter 16. 
in verse 19. And I want, you, I want to read this this morning. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So I want to read this to you out of the, um, out of the Life in the Spirit study Bible. It says, God has already, uh, this is my words, God has already given us the power through the death of Jesus on the cross to what? And this is from, the, from there. Bind demons and disease and to loose the prisoners of sin, addictions and sickness from their bondage and, cap and the captivity unto salvation, just as Jesus did while on earth. We have the power to do so much more than what meets the eye and we seldom use it. We have the power to bind things up and, 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 and people can be free and we can say and, and we loose in the presence of God. We, you know, when you bind something and cast it out, you've got to also replace it with something. And what do we want to replace it with? Healing. We want to replace it with deliverance. I mean, all, I mean, you just pick something that is of God and we can put it right there in that place. So, so we have the power, but how many times do we use it? All these th things can be done with the help of the Holy Spirit if we are willing to be noble instruments. God wants us to walk daily in his authority so that people today can see that our God is still alive and working on this earth today. God desires us to use our talents and abilities for him, not just our use. If you have the talent to teach, then teach for Jesus. Amen? That doesn't mean you don't, that you give up your job and, and teaching in school or whatever, but if you have the ability to teach, then you ought to teach for Jesus. Amen? If you have the talent for music, then use it for him. If you can help people, help people for Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. We have something we can do we can do to make a difference in this lost and dying world all we have to do is ask God to help us and he will one scripture in closing I want us to read 2 Timothy 3 16 and 17 hallelujah 2 Timothy 3 16 and 17 all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God May, thoroughly, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Hallelujah. God has equipped us. Now, how are we going? What are we going to do with it? God has equipped us. What are we going to do with it? Would you stand this morning? Hallelujah. And I didn't go over too much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you just put the music on back there? Um, today I want us to just take a moment first of all I just want us to just think about what the word was today that we can be good instru or instruments of good work so I just want us to take a moment Father we just thank you today Lord that you've given us the ability to be instruments of good work Lord, everything that we do can be we can use for your kingdom and to produce good things in this world. And Lord, I just ask you today to help us with that. Lord, help us to be able to, to reach in ourselves and stir ourselves up and, and, and realize that you have anointed us, you have called us, you have set us apart for service, Father. And thank I, I thank you today for just helping us to, to walk in that, God. Walk in the power, walk in the anointing that you've already provided.